Hello, in this video we're going to look at how to achieve smooth motion for your actors. So this is in cases where you, you want to set a target location, rotation or velocity for your given actors. So this could be via you know AI or perhaps you're synchronizing with a server. So uh, what you're doing is basically setting uh, certain targets to reach and you don't want it to sort of teleport to those uh, locations and positions. Uh, so um, how do you achieve that smooth transition? Um, so uh, all of the steps to achieve this are available on this post, so I'll link that in the description and perhaps I'll get started with a quick demo of um, what it is that we're doing. So uh, what I'll do is I'll first link uh, no smoothing so you can see what happens if you didn't have any smoothing uh, in action. So I'm currently synchronizing with a server which basically provides target uh, locations, uh, rotations and velocities to reach every 0.1 seconds. So what you'll find is that with no smoothing, it's just going to be sort of teleporting around uh, and it looks just very jittery, right? So uh, how can we achieve um, better smoothing, right? How, how do you make it reach from target A to target B in a smoother manner? So this is uh, what we're going to look at now. So I called it smooth V2 and uh, let's see that in action. So what we'll find is that right now it's going to be a lot smoother right so uh, i'm basically uh, still synchronizing at the very same rate so i'm basically saying update your location rotation velocity every 0.1 seconds but rather than teleporting try and smoothly get to that and i can provide it some parameters with you know how quickly do you need to reach those specific points so um yeah let's have a look at how we do that so perhaps we'll get started with uh, creating the component itself. So uh, the way to create it is right click, uh, select uh, create new blueprint class and it's an actor component. So the reason why I've created an actor component is so that I can sort of drop this into my other classes. So for example, I'm using this on a player proxy. I'm gonna be using this on monsters as well. Uh, so that way I don't need to duplicate my uh, blueprints, right? You could, for instance, just implement this directly on your character class and it will work fine as well. So um, this way you can keep things refactored if you need to apply those blueprints elsewhere. Um, so what does it do? Uh, well, there's three separate functions. So one of them is for position smoothing, one for rotation and one for velocity. So we'll go through them in order. And before I do that, uh, you'll have to bear in mind that like there are different ways of executing it. So for instance, I could be uh, executing it directly from event tick inside this component. So I, I'm able to get owner and uh, I'm able to just basically set its variables right here. I could grab the movement component as well, which we would need for velocity um, and sort of put it as a constructor inside the character class when you initialize this component. Um, but I chose not to, to give myself some extra granularity uh, for executing this smoothing. Now, basically, don't worry about it um, because if you follow these steps exactly, it will still work, but there are different ways of calling these functions, right? So, um, you, you know, feel free to choose whatever suits your needs most. Uh, but what I've done essentially is you can see from my player proxy blueprint, so this is the one representing my characters, uh, I have myself this event tick and I basically call this smooth v2 function which says okay every event uh, call position smoothing rotation smoothing and velocity smoothing uh, and this is what I mean by this granular control I only want to execute it in certain circumstances so I, I don't want it to be executing on my character creation screen there's just no need for me to be executing this so I just have this if statement, right? Um, th this is just an example. So uh, feel free to choose your own ways of executing it basically, right? Okay, so now we can perhaps look into the implementation for these functions. Now, the main thing that I want to highlight is that really we're just leveraging existing functions from Unreal Engine math libraries. So uh, Unreal Engine have provided some really cool functions, for instance, vinterp2 and rinterp2. And this does the work for you, right? It tries to reach a target based on distance from the current position, given a nice smooth feeling when tracking a position. So it basically implemented the functionality for you and all you need to do is wire it to your actors. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, the first thing that I do though is just check, uh, is my current actor 
at the target location already. So uh, basically, are they equal? And th this is the, um, the threshold for the difference. And only if it's different will I try and execute this call. And what I have to do is provide the current location. So this is the current vector. I provide the target vector. And the delta time is basically the time since your last frame and provided the speed. So the speed is like, how fast uh, are you trying to reach your target? So uh, play around with this parameter uh, to achieve the smoothing that you require essentially, right? And then you simply set the actor location based on the output from here. So you're not actually changing the uh, target location. Uh, you're not modifying the uh, current directly um, or, or rather you're basically evaluating what is the, the next target location that you can set based on the previous and the target given a particular speed. Okay, so that's really what we're trying to um, do here, like update the actor location, rotation and velocity every frame, uh, but in a smooth manner based on the current and the target um, location. Okay, so the rotation will look very similar, uh, but instead of um, vinterp2, you're now using rinterp2. So uh, this is because you're taking a uh, rotator as an input and a rotator as a target. Now, the reason why you need a rotator is because there, there's some funny logic when you reach basically 180 to minus 180 degrees. It might just spin around too much if you're using V interp2 here. Uh, so that's why we're using R interp. And you can see everything else is basically uh, the same, right? So there's me checking for my threshold. Uh, is it different? And if it's different, then I'm going to update it. Velocity is also very similar, but you don't have direct access to uh, velocity. So you actually, um, the actors don't have a velocity native. It's a uh, part of the, the movement component, right? So if I have my player proxy over here, uh, part of the components, there's this thing called character movement. So this is the component which holds your velocity value. So you can see when I'm executing my velocity smoothing, I provide the character movement component as well. And then that's how I set uh, that velocity. I, I set it on this character movement reference and that's how it gets updated. So uh, everything is basically done for you. So these functions can remain to look very simple. Uh, you just basically need to leverage uh, these uh, functions and play around with the, the speed to achieve the smoothing that works for you. And that's basically it. So uh, good luck. Any questions, let me know. And yeah, see you next time. Bye.